Hi everyone, it's 23rd of April. So there's a few jobs I'm going to get on with today just to, uh, well the weather's still fine anyway, just to make a bit of room really. I think I'm going to uh, put my tomato plants, which are all just under this fleece at the moment, I'm going to put them in the final pots. It just eases off on the watering, they can start pumping roots into their final pot ready to go into the beds which are down below, which will be in a video probably into May that. Also, my Kelsey onions, they're going to go down the garden. Um, like I say, it's all to ease up the pressure on watering because things you know, are, are quite demanding regarding watering, but if they can actually be in the ground, you know, they can kind of sustain themselves to a degree. There's a bit more storage in the ground rather than to come out every day, keep watering stuff. And then my um, Russell sprouts, they can uh, be planted in now. Now we've uh, taken a lot of stuff to the allotment that's all been planted. How these videos are going to go up, I don't know what order they're going to be in. Because um, I've got a lot of footage, so I'm just going to make some videos out of it. Or one big video, I don't know yet. So you might have seen some stuff already, or it might not. So uh, we'll have a quick look round. Um, I say not much has changed. Really. I planted a few lettuce out and stuff like that. So and then just been getting on a few of the jobs really. Right, so we'll have a look. Right, we'll have a wander down. Um, emptied that compost bin out now. It's all been turned into there um, just to do you know, its final sort of rotting. And that'll probably, probably start using that in about I don't know five six weeks. Might start trying if it's probably broken down enough. It's full of worms, you know. It's just turning there, it's, it's, it's heated up again a little bit because obviously there's air gone into it. So I'll let it cool off and the, the worms will come in and do a bit. So, more peas, same as last time. They were, you know, kind of sown the five a dice way just because I haven't got many seeds. Um, that bed's got some lettuce in it now. I decided to save this part of the bed here. I've got like um, four foot by probably five foot there, which will end up leaks will go in there. I think <laughs> things are always subject to change in my garden. Uh, there's the Brussels sprouts, and they're going to go under that net. Uh, I do need to put a bigger net up, but that one will do for now until they've tapped things. I've got the other hoops there, which when I did a video on you know how I make the uh, net covers, it's going to be the same hoop setup as that because the Brussels sprouts went in there that year so um, they're going to go in there greens are perking up so I'll put some little gem lettuce down that end there's nothing in that bed yet apart from a looks like a a rogue seed from like a I don't know whether it's uh, some sort of courgette or a cucumber I think it's courgette I think could be a sunflower I don't know these are uh, backup plants um, they're probably giving away to my brother-in-law and a couple of friends I've given one tray away already so I've got to say I've got the 18 that I need down there so I think there's another 18 or 20 in there um, pretty much a, a, a copy of the other ones I'm growing like the moneymaker Alicante Garden is Delight, Sun Gold and San Marzano hey I think I remember them all carrot box I thin these out to three in each one, so I'll give it another, probably another week at most, and then I'll thin them down to one. This row of spuds, uh, they're out here now. I need to put the other row across there, but it's not vital just yet. A um, little bit patchy, but I'm hoping none of the spuds have rotted off down in there. It has happened before, and I don't think I've got any more King Edward seed potatoes anyway. But uh, we'll just see how they go. Um, this is where I'm going to put the big onions this year. I'm putting 30 in. So uh, there's going to be a lot of onion providing they grow. Okay, they're going to be a bit topply because they've been in the um, polytunnel. Tops are quite high on them, so they'll get battered by wind and collapse about a bit, but they'll perk up. I'm not growing them for giant giants, so I get a couple of pounds on each one, I'm not bothered. But anything, you know, between up, up to five pounds would be great. Radish, they're all coming up in there. Carrots are as well. Ants have been having a do at stuff, so I need to put some ant powder in there. Um, walk around this way. I'll try not to fall over. Sorry about the uh, wobbly footage. It's a bit of a balancing act going on here. 
Now, uh, this is Rocket here. I put it out here because it's quite a close space because Rocket being Rocket, it'll rock it to seed soon. So uh, get a bit more growth and then it'll shoot to seed. So it'll be out of the way before too long. Um, a few wasps buzzing around today. These are iceberg lettuce and they're the mazure. And I'll have a little space at the end here left over. You know, just down here, which it doesn't look much. I mean, it's probably only two foot by, don't know, 15 inch. But I'll probably be able to get like 12 bunches of spring onions in that. So instead of just leaving it to grow weeds and you can put anything in that, any little, even a couple of herbs or something, I don't know. Um, that's about it that's going on up the top end at garden. Um, no idea how I want my frost tender stuff's going because I've shoved that under lights so and I've been laughing out of the way so I've not looked at it for about four days. There was no sign of anything the other day but uh, nothing's really changed elsewhere. I need to get a cut on the grass before this weather changes. I think it's only a matter of time and it'll have a bit of a rain. But uh, right, they're coming on now, these peas. You know, some of them are going to go down to the plot. So, I mean, it's all sort of regrown back, so need to chunk some more out because I mainly took the bulk out of this, this area here. There's a little baby spinach leaf. A tub of the spring onion that overwintered. Still a bit straggly, but they'll do until the new little ones are ready. The raw mazure. I think I'm going to put uh, climbing beans in this bed. The gutter keeps dry, it dries out so quick in this sun, and there's some singular ones there that I'm going to thicken up the ones that the allotment with or should I need them and then finally down here the sweet peas um, just started to uh, they've sent out the side things I'll trim them up or I might just leave them be and let them grow a big wild mass which is how my mum used to do them to be honest she used to just you know thin them out a little bit and then just let them go for it and they used to get so top heavy so you have to keep tying them back but uh the greening up, they've tapped in now, they need a good water. So they do sulk a bit until they've got the roots in and then they're away. Once they grab on, you know, so the next few weeks they'll grab. Uh, this clematis actually hacked that right back, probably only about six weeks ago, just to the main bottom runner. I usually just pull it all down each side and it sprouts up and it'll come up top there. I need to trim that off or something or tidy it up. And then um, a couple of months will be full of purple flowers. That so I've got loads of strawberries in pots, which is all right, but it's like it's more a watering thing. So I need to start thinking about strawberry beds and all that sort of thing. But it's not right now. That's going to be a, a preparing summit for next year for strawberries. It's been a long time since I've had a good dedicated strawberry bed. You know, the ones at the allotment have not been great last few years. I think I've got like um, grubs and vine weevil in the roots. I need to sort of take some runners off and deal with them. These peas are starting to rock it up now, they've latched onto the netting. So they're all uh, all doing okay. And gooseberry bushes, no trace of uh, the slow, the saw fly yet, but I'm sure it'll arrive. A couple of little, I don't know where you can see, but there's a couple of little tiny gooseberry starting on it. So we shall uh, crack on. Well, I'm going to pot on these tomatoes, it shouldn't take long to do this, it's usually pretty straightforward. Uh, instead of pulling them out of it, I'm going to try and do them in situ, so, um, which is something I've not really done before on a shelf in here, I don't think. But we'll just see how we go, I'll just get this fleece off. Because so, they're getting quite warm in here, I need to put some shade netting on. You know, they're getting a bit sulky sometimes, I think the roots are getting quite hot. So, uh, like I said, once I've made a bit of room, they can kind of go lower down in the daytime and then back up here at night until I pull them out. So, uh, I'll just move these ones out of the way. Put that tray under there for now. Pop these out of the way. These are piccolo, these were called, from supermarket tomato. Um, just took some seeds out. Well, I don't know whether they're an F1 or a heritage or not, no idea. We'll just uh, cross that bridge when it comes to it and they can just go under there for now.
I don't even know where they're going to go yet. There isn't any space in here for them. So they might end up uh, getting was down in the old uh, cucumber house down the bottom. So it's all about just making a bit of room because I need to prepare these beds a bit. I might put a bit of manure in them and stuff like that. So uh, it's pretty much, I'm uh, just going to lift this pot with the planting. Take this dummy pot out. You know, so hopefully it doesn't all cave in. You can see I've got a pot of compost there. Well, you can see with a square hole in it already, which is where that pot sat. So this is the uh, two pot method. There's uh, this inner pot has no bottom in it, but this outer pot does. Seems a bit daft, but um, it's just so when I come to plant them out, take this outer pot off and nestle it into the raised bed and the roots will pump through. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. I might de sucker a little bit as I go because I'm starting to put suckers out and little fruit buds and that. Get rid of any sort of grubby seed leaves. This one's a sand, sand miles on. I'll do them all the same. In this case, of, let me label out. Squeeze that. Say so it's not root bound, there's still room at the bottom for more roots, but then just nestle it into its new home. And that's it. That's the last potted on for them. And when I come to put them in the actual bed, Okay, so pull it out of one pot and just sit it on the bed. So it's, it is worthwhile sort of pre-making your pots like this. Makes all this uh, potting on part a lot, a lot quicker. You know, they, they will need a bit of a water. It is dampish, but it just helps settle all the compost. And I'll, uh, I'll top water them just to help wash all the sediment in around the gap you know it's the same it's not like a different compost or anything so there shouldn't be any shock temperature wise shouldn't be any shock because it's been sat in here but it should all go okay move them out of the way it just gives me a bit of room to get this back row after you see You might get the odd one if it's a bit dry. Might crumble a few bits in, but uh, it is what it is. It's uh, it's bloody hot in here and all that. There's me with the jacket on. It keeps all my microphone wire out of the way because ends up getting snagged up on stuff. A few suckers on this. There's a few manky leaves and they just damage. But, so, so, you know, you, it's good to spend a little bit of time going through and de suckering. You know, so I'll probably pay a bit more detail to that when I water them after. Just a case of getting them in these pots. And if it's not too breezy today, I might put them outside for a bit to get a bit of a, an airflow through them. And uh, hopefully, when things fall over the place in your polytunnel, really not organised this year. It's just an absolute mess everywhere. I've been meaning to put another shelf up or something in this polytunnel for about 10 years now, and it's never happened. Put a label in, otherwise, I'll be. Forgetting what's going where then. These are the alicantes, these. So, because I'd have, I'd have sold a lot of these plants, you know, my surplus, but garden centres are shut. I think they're going to try and reopen some of them. But, uh, so, very little goes to waste, waste with uh, my family and friends. And give them a plant and if they do all right it might encourage them to actually realize that uh, it's not too hard to grow your own it is possible move that back out of the way it 
yeah it just saves um, a lot of messing about being able to uh, just pot things on like this just well personally for me anyway it's just I don't know it's, it's the kind of final point for me this you feel like you know the uh, the end of the care stage well sort of caring for seedling stages is nearly nearly at the end it's up to uh, you do your best you can for them and then they're uh, they're on their own as long as you've done your bit okay it gives them that little bit of a head start you know but say we're still in April and for me there's still a risk of frost for the next three or four weeks so as much as I'd like to get these in the bed down the bottom while they're in these pots should a cold snap come I can uh, I can get them all and take them indoors well, temperature went down last night to seven and a half degrees they've been down to about four these have you know which was a bit of a, a worry but there's been no signs of cold sulking or burnt tips and things like that Look, it just has to be careful because I know they like the heat but you don't want to cook them it's like a lot of plants don't like uh, don't like hot roots but I do tend to start keeping them a little bit on the drier side just to encourage the roots to to reach out into the pot because obviously the pot will be wetter down the bottom and it's to encourage them roots to dump down more roots you can get you know at this stage the faster it'll tap into the bed you know and because uh, it's starting to get little bits of fruit buds on already little flowers and that it seems time to start feeding you know there is there will be a little bit of feed in this compost from what they put in whatever it is you know the four to six weeks but generally tomatoes every week to two weeks start feeding um, whether it really massively helps I don't know but it's just the way the way that it's kind of done I guess and you're just trying to trying to adapt to uh, trusted and tried methods you know it's, all, it's okay to experiment a little bit the monkey leaves on that. It's funny actually, it's had a, a blight warning a couple of times, but not not the two days together. So <sighs> nearly done. some of these especially the old uh, sun gold because they're getting a bit uh, a bit tall especially that one's having a bit of a lean That's all tomatoes potted on. So uh, you can go all the way back to February and see me sow the seeds of all these, prick them out. I do think it's important if you're going to uh, video things, 
try and show as much as a life cycle you get a lot you know little sow seeds but you never see the end result so I'll try and show them um, so what you see me start at the end of the year you follow it right through to when I harvest we bring them forward a bit because uh, I don't like them damping off because it does get a bit condensation you know? so it falls a little bit green but uh, have to have a look see if I've got any Epsom salts that helps green stuff up <laughs> right, so I guess I'll go and get on with my Brussels sprouts now uh, I'm not going to completely remove this now I'm just going to uh, hopefully make it kind of accessible I don't want to risk leaving them uncovered for too long it only takes a minute for a cabbage white to come in and lay its eggs and get it up enough to uh, plant the stuff that's that's the main aim a few little weeds starting to grow let's get this contraption out of here for now uh, like the old greenhouses you you buy and stuff they fall to bits but you can salvage bits and make little frames out of them These are just leftover sweet peas. But, uh, I'm going to try and get to my sister if I can. I don't think I've got a hoe. There I have. I'll just give it a little hole before I plant them. Well, it's dry. Just, uh, you can forward this bit if you want. Grass is a worse culprit than anything. And tomato seeds in the compost. They always tend to start sprouting. Not the sharpest hole in the world, this, but. somewhere I can see him. I mean when I take the net off to put a taller net on I'll give it a, a good weeding. Once I start watering stuff in things will start germinating the weeds and that. So I'll give it a bit of a hand weeding, which I don't mind sometimes. Soil's loose enough. It wouldn't take long for the old, uh, see, you know, little tiny weeds to die off in this heat. That's the worst culprit. Put 
clumps of grass growing, you pull it in great chunks of soil out there as well. I just had a bit of my own compost from the, the winter batch, lobbed on top of it, sort of raked about to break it up. First, I better usually grow my onions in. I'm not hoeing it deep because it's, it is quite a firm, firm bed this underneath. You know, because it's not been dug. I don't think I can't remember digging it anyway. But, uh, because all the old Brussels sprouts like it nice and firm. And I'll probably put some uh, cane supports on them at a later date. Just trying to get them to grow fairly straight because once they get a bit of a lean on, a bit of a nightmare. Once they've sort of rooted, they'll kind of straighten themselves to a degree. A ground beetle, I'm leaving. Probably going to do more good than harm. A few bits here. I can't remember years ago, I don't even know, I can't remember what this weed's called, but... Never used to get much of it. And probably the last 15 years, it's just... relentlessly coming back. Know, when you've got like surrounding properties, you know, they don't tend to the gardens at all in any way. And some people just don't have time, and some people just cannot be bothered. No, they don't flag it, they just let it grow wild. The problem is when you live. Most of that, that's the uh, pest haven. You know, we wouldn't hide in there and get the rainy nights and I think I'll nip, uh, nip a couple of gardens down and chomp down on his veg, which is annoying. Same with cats, to be honest. Everyone's cats seem to come in this garden. I want to rock it. That's scuffed off completely. You know, you look at like four weeks of growth and a little seedling ended because a cat comes and does its business. Right, I'm not sure how many I've got here. So I might not need all of them, I don't know. Let's have a quick count up, shall we? Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got one that's a bit of a small runt in here somewhere, I'm trying to find it. Uh, so. We've got 14, two rolls of seven, that'll do. That'll make it a bit easier to work out. So you've got sort of, uh, sort of about middle. Somewhere near end. That's three, so I've got to get. It's a tight squeeze. Be enough. You've got a good 15, 16 inch. It's something like that. Something like that. A lot of it going. That's the, uh, the bendy one, the runt. They're all a bit topply, to be honest. But Get them firm right down, they'll be fine. Right. Plank of wood, or a plank of wood will do. <coughs> I 
I think because uh, you, you don't want to be too near the edge because the net will curve so I'll try and bring them in a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. yeah that'll do about there I guess. Yep, we'll go with that. Right, I'll get my trowel. Just so you can see what I'm doing, I'll have to <coughs> crawl in the bed. Just move that out of the way for now. Yeah. I'm not bothered about firming it down and stuff like that, because the uh, firmer the better. In case of working on a sort of evenish kind of spacing. them up a bit. It's about the halfway mark and then I'll do the rest and start with this one. Then once you get about two or three inches down it's quite quite firm down there. It'll loosen it up a little bit because I want to drive the plant you know quite a bit down got a bus leaf deal with them after Uh, if you don't uh, make sure your ground's fairly firm, they'll rock off a bit and uh, your Brussels sprouts will end up not forming tight buttons, they'll tend to blow a bit. There's probably other reasons to contribute to that, but it's one of the leading factors. Uh, so don't be worried about and firming them down with your feet and stuff like that. Don't worry about that. And bury them right down to the leaves as well. It's very different than the uh, allotment soil this. You know, it's just years of putting compost in it. It's not too bad at all. Well, that's M4. Do these for this side now. Just uh, even that area off. Use my trowel for a bit of a measuring thing. That's quite handy because it's a trowel for side. We'll go with that again. You know, really, sprouts can do with a bit more spacing, but. Because they're quite well fed beds these, they, uh, they'll do all right. So I mean, uh, a few people comment that uh, they're a bit rough with seedlings, but I've got to think of the old when they're out here in the wind hits them. There's no uh, there's no kindness to them then, so they need to be able to stand up to it. I'm 
just was them in. They'll have a week of sulking or whatnot. And then you'll notice a nice green tip starting. And that means uh, you're off the ruin. If it starts getting a bit tight down that end, I'll just uh, put one on the diagonal rather than two at the end. Still a 12 inch apart, I think. 12, 12. Mm -hmm. It's quite fun. Uh, we'll just go with it. I'm going to transplant them about if need be at a later date. We'll get plenty of soil with it. I've got left over. They're, uh, they're kind of spoken for, to be honest. <laughs> that one's a bit wonky, I'll earth it up a little bit around it. Just to let it uh, right its way. Just, just about. It's a bit tight near end at net, but we'll go with it. So when I first saw these Brussels sprouts. I don't think they were happy in the compost at all because it went all distorted and funny when I potted them on and they put some more roots out there sort of perked up so a bit uh, dubious now with the growth show stuff it's always been kind of all right but all done. Varieties uh, Maximus. I don't think I've grown that one before. I've grown that Trafalgar, Bedford, 
the Evesham Special. Like I say, it's just it's more to do with your ground. Anything with sprouts, a lot of people struggle with them. It can be a bit hit and miss. The same main thing is keep your ground firm. So it does not matter if you want to go in and tread all around them like that, it won't do them any harm at all. Give them something to uh, anchor into. You know, and uh, a bit of lime added to the soil, won't do that now. You know, because they do like uh, limey soils, Nebraska's do. You know, it prevents club root and other things, like cabbage root fly, aren't keen on a good dose of lime. An old thing for cabbage root fly was drop a tea bag in bottom at all. Whether it works or not, I don't know. Should worry anyway, plenty of tea bags in that compost. Not a bruise out of here. So you just look a bit of an idiot doing this, like some sort of madman in gardener's dance. But uh, that's that. I can drop the net down because I can water them through the net. I don't want to go down there and get the watering can and then a butterfly come in. So uh, I'll get these finished and then uh, we'll do the onions. Okay, I'm going to plant these uh, Kelsey onions that were sown I don't know, November, December, I think actually, I can't remember now. Um, sown in a single tray and then pricked out into small pots and then you got potted on into these uh, just one litre pots these so they're uh, getting ready to go out they're a bit flimsy because they've never been actually outside so I'm hoping that the wind's a bit easier for a few days they will get battered and these will drop um, but fresh ones will grow I don't bother making hoops like you know the show growers do higher up uh, because I don't show any veg to be honest I do them for a bit of fun and when I'm making like bulk sauces and stuff uh, I can use a big onion rather than chopping all the little ones up it chops and freezes they're a decent onion they're okay they just don't store very well you know so you, you harvest them sort of September and look if you get past Christmas sometimes but uh, hopefully they're going all right these holes were only dug out a few days ago so the soil might crumble in on them a little bit I don't know but we'll uh, we'll just play that by ear. Spacing is probably don't know maybe 15 inch that way, 12 inch that way. Well, it's enough anyway. You know, like I say, if I, if I get you know two three pounders and great, if I get fives, then fine. You know, I've had a few, but the biggest is about eight I think I've ever had. And, you know, an eight pound onion's a, a fair old lump. There's, there is some weeds growing in this compost. It's funny because they've, they've not actually been exposed to any weed seeds, so it just goes to show even in um, the decent quality compost, you know, the seeds are in there. Still, you know, but uh, never mind, they pick out easy enough. And this just garden soil, this, so this will have weeds in it. Um, like I say, it's been topped off with last year's compost. All I did with this, I had like a little uh, prong cultivator. And I just went along each row and cultivated it just to make it easy to dig out for the holes really um, because onions do like a fair bit of good drainage so you don't like to be planted in really dense heavy soil you know this will sink back down but it should the onions should go down with it that's the plan anyway so it's, it's a bit tight getting in and out of there but we'll just see how we go and we'll hopefully take two down at a time and and do it so they just they'll fall over these I mean I can I can lift these little clips up a little bit but you just need to be careful because you end up it gets a bit um, congested in this sort of central area here and it can, it can trap a lot of the foliage so the best thing to do is put them out and let, them, let the elements at it and it'll, it'll sturdy itself up and send fresh growth up and you know because you'll be pulling these off when they get all yellow and knackered you'll be stripping them off to keep them clean which I don't always do to be honest I should do um, 
but there's enough room down here to get a hole in, but I say you end up with foliage laying everywhere, so it's a little tricky to weed. Like I say, it's just fun, and I've got the space for it here. You know, I usually do them in a raised bed, but I thought I'll put my sprouts over there and see how these do over this side. They've grown once in a row along there, I think, a few years ago, and they didn't do great, but I'm not sure. They, they might have been the Robinson's Mammoth Onions, which I do prefer the taste of, but they don't get quite as big. Right, so I'll work my way along this plank and hopefully these will lift out nice and easily and not fall to pieces on me. You know, which I'm expecting they might do a little bit. It's just a case of uh, carefully coaxing. I mean, they're not root bound, plenty of roots there. You grab it by the, the stem. Just carefully lower it in and then just give it a firm down. I'm going to water these afterwards, I'm not going to water actually there, I'm going to flood it in between. There's a little bit of soil in each one of these, I'll just draw on the top. No, it's not too bad to do. No, it's loose soil, you know, cats will come in, but they should stay away from in between the onions because a bit uh, tired for him to get in between. But I might go back to doing a doing an old de you know thing for deterring the cats, and that's a lot of plastic forks and spoons and knives, and poke them until you know so they're all poking out the ground. But uh, I suppose they're okay. I've got carrots there, and the whole carrot root fly not liking the smell of onion. That help out. So that's the thing now, you see, it's uh, to make sure I keep my pots separate because I've got clean ones and then muddy ones. And that's the only faff going backwards and forwards, so I'm not going to film all this because it's probably going to be a little bit time consuming going backwards and forwards and not the best viewing. Like I said, I've got 30 to put out, well, 28 now, um, so I don't think you want to sit there for half an hour, even though I know some, some do. But uh, it's not the best viewing. So I'll get on with the rest of these and then uh, I'll put the camera back on when I've got the last couple to, to plant out. Must have given me a chance to go in for a brew part way through. But uh, it's so nice to come out in the sunshine and be able to do this rather than the demands, you know, where you've got to come out and do things and it's it's pouring down with rain or something, you know, it's just, it's no fun. But, uh, could do with a little bit of rain at some point soon. Just to help uh, water things, but the ground's not dry. You know, it's, I've had a little, uh, I've got a little probe thing like a pH tester and moisture tester and uh, it's, it's still down as moist to wet, you know, four or five inches down, so I'm not really concerned or anything, so just fair them down a bit more. You know, and they don't they won't take long to, to uh, bite some roots out. I mean I usually push these canes down a bit, which I might do once they've sort of gold, I might just push the canes down a bit. I usually pull these canes out once the onion kind of gets there. Alright, I'll carry on with these. Finally the uh, end's in sight now planting these. It's a bit tedious but um, nearly done. I have been sort of raising these up just a little bit as I've been going. But, uh, I've had a couple of the holes crumbling a little bit but nothing, nothing too bad. So I'm going to get these done. Oop. And uh, give me a few watering cans full of water. That'll probably be about the all I'll give them, to be honest. I don't think I'll give them any more water. And then on. They can uh, send them roots deep down. It's quite damp in the ground, it's just to fill any. Uh, gaps in. If there's any sort of really dead looking foliage at the bottom, I'm 
just peeling it off as I go. Like I've said, I don't, I'm not growing them for show or anything like that. It's a bit of fun. It's a massive onion. You know, and it's, it's pretty impressive when you go a decent year and it's, it's like, like a lot of baby's heads, that's in ground. Uh, uh, there's nothing fancy to it. I mean, yeah, it does. It's, you do need grow lights for it, really. You know, or a, a heated area. Because the trick is, is to just get as long a growth time on them as possible. Because as soon as the uh, longest day comes, it's after that they'll start to. Uh, bulk that's when the weight factor comes in see what as much because every green is like a ring if you know what i mean so that one that's right down in the middle you know there's hundreds of rings but, uh, so i tend to use it uh, for cooking, to be honest, because you know me, my other onions, my normal onions, they store. Still got probably 15 or 20 left over from last year. Still got a stack of garlic left over, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I've got till probably July, when the uh, the batch that's up at the plot will be uh, ready to harvest. Yeah, it's, it's nice how the wind's dropped now. But it's, uh, it is getting a bit hot now. I still need to water them tomatoes. Give them a bit of a water and then... I don't think I'm going to do anything else gardening-wise the rest of the day. It's been quite a, a busy... sort of week and a half gardening-wise getting lots done gonna transform my plot from a unplanted unprepared area really to uh, pretty much fully planted up so i'm just gonna be a bit careful when i water these i don't want to just pour it all over the foliage It. It's not good to plant in the back garden now, apart from my leeks already. You know, sow some more spring onions or whatever and put them down there. They're just waiting for the cucumbers and everything. Huh? Look at me, watering can. And uh, show you how I plan to water these. It's kind of just turn your, your nozzle part way. An angle. I'm just kind of aim it in it and like that. And then sort of turn the head the other way. And kind of go down that side. And repeat that process. A few times till they've got, till they've had a right good drink, and uh, they're up to their own. I say that's a cabbage white knocking around here. It's too late, mate. Nets on my sprouts. So uh, that's it for this video. So take care and stay safe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you now. Bye.